Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> All of this was happening while I was a student at Howard and as a student at that time you know I had a green card so I was here um, on work study working at the university those who work at the university would know I had a job in the game room um, at Howard you know so I'd be down in the game room but work study job gave you only for free time and then I worked at Crampton Auditorium one summer as well big up Crampton Auditorium big up the uh, Blackburn Center game room, two places that I spent whole heap of time. And it was in this place that I started to read the Bible. And I read it as a book from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. I think I read the whole Bible in one summer um, while I was doing work study, because work study sometimes you, you them sit you down and nobody now pass through you good, you do your homework, you do whatever. All of the work study students will know what I'm talking about so I read the Bible and I'm reading about the story of the Hebrews remember I didn't grow up in a church I don't know what this thing is even all about so I'm seeing uh, at that time references to Ethiopia in the Bible and then I'm reading the Ethiopian story of you know how they relate to the Bible and I'm realizing all of these locations in the Bible are in Africa you know, I'm realizing when I read about Noah and his son, Ham, who they say, you know, is a progenitor of black Africa according to the European account. And then Ham has a son, Cain, and then I'm looking at the whole of Palestine. Today would have been inhabited with black people. When I'm reading in Genesis that Cush, you know, that Nimrod was the son of Cush and that he established Babylon, up in what is Mesopotamia I'm saying okay so now this book is telling me that these ancient people were all black people um, in this region and then now I'm looking and seeing okay Abraham grew up in a Cushite town there was no distinction um, of Abraham and then when he's going into Egypt he's still could be Egyptian you know we're seeing these are all the same people this is cultural differences in the people I didn't know I never looked at the Bible as an African story then I start reading books like Babylon to Timbuktu you know uh, the Hebrewism of West Africa because I'm a reader that's why I call myself the reading rat from I was a youth I've been reading so as you know I'm reading books upon books upon books J.A. Rogers comes into the picture at this time, all of these books. So all of these things are being put together. And then I'm seeing the prophecy of this Redeemer that would come in the Bible. I'm seeing all of these things and I'm all at the same time reading with Rastafari elders because at the same time I discovered the Naya Bingi house in Washington, D.C. So all of these things we're gonna go through some of these biblical um, verses that are you know some of the pillars that are used within the Rastafari faith to draw a connection and I want to just answer the question is Haile Selassie I God uh, I didn't learn it that way you know I don't view Haile Selassie as God I look at God as a German term for a deity and Haile Selassie is not that you know we look at Haile Selassie as the manifestation of the Almighty in flesh and bone, you know, fully human, fully divine. And we're going to get to, um, again, some of the, the pillars. Now, within Rastafari, there are different schools of thought. So not everyone uses the biblical route to uh, explain the divinity. We have people who deal with Kemet science in Rastafari. We have people who deal with indigenous Rastafari. How I look at it um, is that religion is personal, state is for all. So all of us deal Rastafari, but every man has his pathway, how he gets there. 
the important thing is that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. So if a man say Rastafari, I'm not going to debate him on his path to get there. We all have to have a path. What I want to do with this platform is just to explain one of the path, my own path, so that you know we can discuss at the end of the day what are the outcomes that you uh, get from the path or the, the way of life. I have tested Haile Selassie on the battlefield all around the world, you know, I'm healing Rastafari, putting my life on the line for Rastafari, all of these things. And Haile Selassie has never failed. I, so I am happy where I am um, and where I'm going because we're just getting started. I don't advise. Well, front to us, a son was born and a child was given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then we call him Christopher when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then we call him Christopher when he was grown in near plains he fly. They call him. Lift up for ride, I can break the chain, weep not, don't cry, them call him. Lift up for ride, read the Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. Then, born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire. No matter if you're brown or black like a tar. Highly Selassie, Sefi and all tribal paradigm. Fee the Mount Zion. Fee drive solar car from the car. Straight to Zanzibar. Who we are? The sons of Christopher Ride. When he was born, rain fall from the sky. Christopher I, when he was grown in airplanes, he fly. Then, Christopher I, the lion break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then, Christopher I, read the Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5.